Good evening, and thank you so much for joining me for this WNCT Now Digital News Update. I'm Emily Severidge, live in the WNCT Digital Studio. Earlier today, Governor Roy Cooper and his coronavirus task force held a news conference to discuss the new possibilities of easing restrictions. Governor Cooper has lifted the statewide curfew, which goes into effect this Friday. The mask mandate is still in place. Gyms, museums, aquariums, barbers, pools, outdoor amusement parks, retail establishments, restaurants, breweries, and wineries may now open at 50% capacity in keeping along with safety protocols. The time for ending on-site service of alcohol has been now moved to 11 p.m. Businesses limited to operating outdoors at 30 percent, like stadiums, sports fields and venues and more, will keep up that 30 percent but will no longer have a 100 person cap. A new executive order will also allow some indoor businesses to open at 30 percent capacity with a cap of 250 people. A new vaccine possibility is in the works, and it's from household name brand Johnson & Johnson. The FDA says Johnson & Johnson's one-shot COVID-19 vaccine appears safe and effective in trials. FDA officials reported that overall the vaccine is about 66% effective at preventing moderate to severe COVID-19 symptoms. And that one shot could help speed up the vaccination process by requiring just one dose instead of two. A global trial was done involving nearly 44,000 people. Effectiveness varied across different continents. The FDA's analysis did not raise any specific safety concerns that would preclude the shot for emergency use. FDA experts will meet this Friday to decide whether to approve the shot or not. They are expected to make that final decision within days. If approved, the vaccine will begin being distribu distributed immediately for emergency use. A North Carolina mom is warning other parents about a rare and serious complication of COVID-19, one that put her two-year-old son in intensive care. Our sister station in Charlotte reports. I prayed, I cried, and I prayed and cried some more. Darrell Marshman could do little else but try to comfort her son as doctors treated him for multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children. I had no idea that was even a such thing of MISC. I had no idea. The rest of the family came down with COVID at the beginning of January, but two-year-old Graydon appeared unaffected. He showed no signs and no symptoms. Weeks later, he developed a sudden fever. It was over 103. Fever reducers and prescribed antibiotics didn't help. Darrell says she took Graydon to the ER multiple times for severe abdominal pain, then a rash, before he tested positive for COVID antibodies, and doctors diagnosed Miss C. His body was so inflamed to the point of when I touched him, he would say, Mommy, you're hurting me. After nearly a week, Graydon got to go home. This time, the tears were joyful. I cried <laughs> from the hospital all the way to my house because I didn't know if I was going to bring, bring him home. According to the CDC, at least 2,060 children across the country have been diagnosed with Miss C. 30 have died. Most children recover with treatment, but Graydon's family doesn't know if he'll face long-term effects. He does have inflammation in his right coronary artery. For now, they're just grateful he's smiling and playing, and they hope their experience might help someone else. Really what I would say to parents is beware of a fever. Listen to your children. If they tell you that they have any pain, listen to them. An open investigation into a child being left outside in freezing temperatures at a daycare and a very rare bird sighting. That and more coming up after this short break. Good afternoon, everyone. Good evening. You're watching live coverage of a news conference. Live to breaking news. We're live outside. In Joins us live in Kinston, in Jacksonville, in New Bern, now in Greenville. Dangerous conditions. We don't dare drop our guard. Rip currents can be really hard to spot. The Washington waterfront, chair pieces, and cable lines. Walking you through the story. Peace. Working day in and day out. This election. Unprecedented. I did speak to the Board of Elections director. We are there with you. We're on your side. Nine on your side. Weekdays starting at five. Thanks so much for joining me. If you're just tuning in, I'm Emily Severidge, live in the WNCT Digital Studio, bringing you some evening updates. WNCT is bringing you live streamed updates every Monday through Friday at 1.30 p.m. and 4 o'clock p.m. to bring you the latest and up-to-date news before our nightly newscasts. 
A bird watcher in Pennsylvania got a once-in-a-lifetime bird sighting, a rare cardinal that appears to be half male and half female. The bird is literally divided right down the middle. Typically, the male cardinal cardinals have bright red plumage, while the females are buffy brownish color. These types of species are called gynandromorphs, or half-siders, and are very rare. In theory, the bird could mate with a male bird and lay eggs, or mate with a female and father eggs. An Amber Alert has been issued for a missing four-year-old girl last seen in Brunswick County. Four-year-old Aubrey Leanna McFarlane has brown hair and brown eyes. She was last seen wearing a purple shirt, black leggings, black zip-up boots, and a pink fleece jacket. Authorities believe Aubrey is with Elijah Muhammad McFarland. McFarlane is described as a 37-year-old man standing 5'8 with black hair and brown eyes. He was last seen wearing a black shirt, black pants and black shoes. Authorities say McFarlane may have been driving US 17 North in a Burgundy 2008 Chrysler PT Cruiser with North Carolina license plate number TYC 9075. If you have any information regarding this abduction, authorities ask that you call the Brunswick County Sheriff's Office. A father in Farmington, Missouri, says his child was left outside of her daycare in freezing temperatures. Police are now investigating the incident, and our sister station in St. Louis has more on the story. Three-year-old Avery Bishop has been attending First Steps Daycare in Farmington since she was an infant. Now there's a police investigation underway because she was allegedly left outside in freezing temperatures without a coat. This happened Friday when another parent was picking up her child from the daycare around 4.30 Friday afternoon. She heard a faint cry in the distance, then went inside, got her kid, walked out, and still heard the cry. As she drove away, she saw Avery in her side mirror. She went back inside and told the daycare. Avery's dad isn't sure how long his daughter was outside, but says the other parent witnessed at least 20 minutes. It's not a bad daycare. That's not what I'm saying. But something happened in that moment of a perfect storm, and it happened to happen to my child, but it could have been as easily anybody's child. The daycare did not return our request for comment. Now, Bishop tells us the Family Services Division is coming on Wednesday morning to interview Avery to see how she's doing after this incident because they're also conducting their own investigation. From Farmington, Zara Barker, Fox 2 News. Well, that's going to wrap up this WNCT Now digital news update. We have more news coming up for you tonight on our broadcast at 5 and 6. Thanks so much for watching.